So I'm Dr. Chatterjee from Johns Hopkins School of Medicine. Um, there's a saying at Hopkins that the, the patients are waiting patiently. So my question to you is, when do you think you will have your traditional medicine drugs available to them? And my second question is that if you wish to, us to collaborate with Amrita University, where are we going to get the funds? Uh, is the United Nations or other resources will be approached? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. um, professor from Johns Hopkins, uh, one of the reasons I came here is also to explore possibility of transatlantic collaboration and then uh, we should talk uh, later on because the DVZ I showed you earlier is certainly already active, is actually inspired by this formulation already in phase three clinical trial for angina. Uh, we found that uh, we, we tried to find out what's happening here. We found a compound called IDHP. I didn't have time to tell you. I'll send an email to you. Uh, and then so we insp were inspired to synthesize uh, 200 new chemicals, patented and so on and so forth. And DBA was, DBZ is the first one we fed into Apple E mice. And the data there uh, actually shows quite clearly. And, and so what is happening is the next stage is that you want to go uh, with, other, uh, with other collaborators who have different models of uh, cardiovascular diseases or even stroke and so on and so forth. So to answer your, to answer your question, uh, patient has still had to be patient. But I think that might come sooner. But however, if you were to use uh, uh, Dentonic, uh, which is already available, clinical trial, if you go to China, it's available there. And it has been used for about 30 years. So the safety issue is not a major one. It's actually whether it get approved by the FDA to become a botanical drug is a, a different matter. But how, it has gone to phase three clinical trial. And if actually had successfully completed it, probably they'll be there in a couple of years' time. Having said that, in European Union, and there's a parallel uh, kind of what is called, is called uh, botanical, it's called herbal medicinal product. It's a new, because at the moment we have chemical drug, we have biologic, which are antibodies, which are actually, uh, and antibodies are also fusion proteins. But in the middle, you actually are going to have botanical drugs. In the United States, there are only two approved. One is uh, for topical application from green tea extract. The other one is actually extract from dragon's blood, a South American plant. And so the area is going to be very, very active. Only two approved today. And in part two of the special supplement I edited, FDA has made very, very clear what they are looking for. So if you are going to develop a botanical drug, the United States is probably a very, very good place because it's open to, uh, to this new uh, category of drugs, botanical drugs. So I hope I have some touch upon your question that uh, chances are quite good. In FDA, it's actually recognized particular drugs. In European Medicine Agency, now they have two approved medication from plants. So, and that is actually from the Orient. But also they have European herbs, which has been approved. So it's not unknown to have these herbals being used as OTC. But if companies want to become a prescription drug, that's a different matter. So thank you for the uh, uh, question about funding streams because it's one obviously that occupies us all. Um, just to sort of backtrack a bit, um, the whole idea now is to bring traditional medicines into the modern age and try to persuade uh, the world um, that, they, that they are acceptable and indeed very efficacious. To do this we need big science. And uh, this involves various forms of systems biology analyzing not just what the, the plant is making, but then the effects of uh, its metabolism, the effects on the disease, the effect on the patient in general, and so on and so on. And all this is, uh, needs to be done uh, by um, really high-tech experts. So the, the European Union Framework Programme is the beginning of, of something um, which we envisage can be, now be enlarged um, so that a consortia uh, of global uh, technologists 
can look at the question of bringing traditional medicine into an acceptable framework for the FDA and the other approving organizations. The important thing for us as academics is that we bring young people in on this picture. And so we need them to uh, really underpin uh, what we want to do and give them the opportunity to go to different centers and learn about these very modern and indeed rather expensive technologies. So the question of funding streams is a very big one. Um, here in Amrita, we obviously have some ideas about going to um, individual organizations to, to ask for money, to really get the ball rolling. Um, so we know, for instance, that the Indian government are very supportive um, of this kind of research, the Japanese government the same. Um, but we do need to have uh, really a think tank of the people involved uh, to get together and think about how we can really put a bedrock of funding behind this. And all ideas on this would, would, would be very welcome. And we hope uh, that the United Nations members will support us in this. I also like to uh, stress that the medical care is very important for our life, for uh, uh, the good life. So in advanced countries, uh, there are new drugs uh, developed and the treatment has been, uh, been certain areas are successful. One of the problem I found, um, I or many of us, is that those new drugs are very expensive. It's not readily available, uh, some of the very good drugs. So if we look at whole uh, world, there are under developing countries. So, well, for example, if I talk about the rheumatoid arthritis, the very good treatment uh, with the anti-tumor necrosis factor, uh, blockade, uh, the blockade of TNF. It's cost about $10,000 per year for patient, which is not easily available for the developing country. So I thought it's quite wonderful to listen to. There are a lot of natural resources which has been untapped. The relatively easy, uh, it's still difficult to obtain, but it's a much more uh, economically available if one is successful. And as Professor Murphy mentioned, that uh, to develop from the natural resor uh, resources, to have a very good drug requires very high throughput and the technological advancement. So combining the two, we probably have a very good hope uh, in the availability in, to the world, not only the selected uh, polarized population. So that's the one thing I think it is very important for us to think about how to uh, uh, make a good treatment for everybody. Thank you very much. <laughs>